We're starting today with the larynx, which is basically in that little yellow box right there. Except for its lid. The lid of the larynx is kind of sticking up right there. There it is. But the rest of the larynx is in this box right here. Larynx is super important. Number one job it does is make sure, make sure food, drink, as they're going down the oral cavity here, oropharynx, that they go down the esophagus. That they do not go down the airway. So this is a, a horrible... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Horrible design, for lack of a better word. I hate that word. Horrible design for a human being, for any animal, to have a shared pathway for both air and food. Best we can do is have the larynx to make sure, as best we can, that food goes down the right way. There are nine cartilages in the larynx. We're going to knock out three of them. Leave six to your imagination. Plus, there are membranes, there are ligaments, there are epithelial muscles, nerves, blood vessels, all the normal things that would be in an organ. Um, once you're below these vocal folds here, once you're below these vocal folds here, you are going to have standard respiratory epithelium. When you're above them, you're going to have stratified squamous epithelium because you're not basically still on that food area right there. All right. When we look here, by the way, of course, the upper fold is the false vocal cord or vestibular fold. The lower fold is the true vocal cord or vocal fold. The lower one, the true one, is the one that vibrates as air rushes out of the lungs in order to create a buzzing sound, which is then modified further by your pharynx, by your tongue, by your soft palate, by your cheeks, by your lips, etc., to make the sounds that we normally hear. In this view, also we can see the epiglottis, the thyroid cartilage, and in both the front and the back of the cricoid cartilages, all things that you met in lab. Okay, what else? Let's look at another picture here. See the larynx, very nicely right in here. See the hyoid bone just above it, with the epiglottis peeking over the hyoid bone. And we see the thyroid cartilage, and we see the point at which they, the thyroid cartilage, the embryonic halves meet. That's the sticky out, the jutting out point. It's called the laryngeal prominence. We also see inferior to the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, and beneath that we see the trachea. Okay, we'll look at it from behind. Notice the thyroid cartilage does not come around all the way to the back. The word thyroid means shield, so it would not be a full circle, just like a shield would not be a full circle as well. Um, cricoid cartilage does come all the way around. The cricoid cartilage is ring-shaped. All right, what else? Let's look at a view as we go down sort of with a, with a scope and look inside. We can see the lots of cool stuff here. We can see the space within the glottis here. We can see the vocal and vestibular folds there. And we can see them over here as well, plus the epiglottis, tongue as well. And um, the, the big thing we can notice here is the difference in the size of the opening here versus here. So when you whisper, it looks more like this. When you're shouting, it's a little more like this, a little bigger even. And of course, here's the real thing. I mean, number one, there is the vocal fold. Number three is the glottis. Number two is the vestibular fold. Number five is the epiglottis. I don't really worry about number four. Now, there's a sphincter function to the larynx in that it can close up. So we can actually close our glottis. And if we close our glottis and exhale, what that does is it increases thoracic pressure. This is what we do when we try and lift something heavy. It's what you should not do when you're lifting weights because, of course, if you're increasing thoracic pressure, you decrease um, venous return to the heart and you decrease stroke volume and you could faint or worse. Now, uh, when I, I mean, use this sphincter function when you're straining, when you're pooping, when you're doing anything like that. So it is important, although not advisable, to do when lifting weights. Okay, with that, let's keep on going. The trachea. Trachea runs from the larynx down to the main bronchi. We see the trachea right here, running through the neck and superior chest, just anterior to the esophagus. And we see the same situation right here. Esophagus in the back, trachea in the front. Trachea is going to have normal pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells. It's going to have a connective tissue submucosa. It's going to have mucus glands in there, seromucus glands that make a watery, slightly sticky fluid for the usual functions, 
hydrating, humidifying, moisturizing, those are all the same thing, by the way, plus heating, plus filtering. We also see the hyaline cartilage, which of course is not a full ring, because the esophagus is in the back. The esophagus has got to have room to expand when you swallow a big bite of food. It needs to be able to push into the lumen of the trachea, and it does so. We do have a muscle back here, which is called the trachealis muscle, which is going to function primarily when you're coughing. We also see the outer connective tissue layer, the adventitia, which is going to anchor the trachea to the esophagus. We see that there, and to any other surrounding neighboring structures. Um, here we see the classic pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Nice looking cilia right there. See some connective tissue beneath. Here we see the esophagus in the back and the trachea in the front. Notice the cartilage has this U-shaped structure. The cartilage does not extend around in a full ring. Now obviously why do we need the cartilage? We've got to have cartilage so the trachea does not collapse. There is the danger that it would collapse during inspiration. When you're breathing in, the walls of the trachea could collapse down. We don't want that to happen, so cartilage is in there to prevent that. Okay, good. Moving on. Long time. Look how big the lungs are. The lungs are huge. The base of the lungs are resting upon the diaphragm. The apices of the lungs, all the way up here, kind of peek out over your clavicles, which is crazy. You don't think about your lungs being that high, but they are. Lungs are occupying pretty much the entire thorax, with the exception of the mediastinum, which is where you find the heart, of course. Lungs are protected by myriad bones, including the ribs, of course, sternum, scapulae, vertebrae, clavicles, plus the costal cartilages and all the musculature in the thoracic wall. All right. If we look at the lungs, now let's take a look at the inside first where all the cool stuff is going in and out. The indentation, of course, is a hilum. We have pulmonary veins, the red ones coming out. We have pulmonary arteries, the blue guys going in. Plus, we see our two main bronchi going in as well. By the way, notice how there is an impression in the left side of the heart, left side of the lung, excuse me, called the cardiac impression, and an indentation in the front called the cardiac notch. These are created by the heart. Notice that we do not label the same things on the right. This is because the bulk of the heart, of course, is pushing towards the left. All right, another view, and this view is awesome because in transverse section, we see the size differential between the left and right lung, and that is because the bulk of the heart, of course, is towards the left. Unless you have dextrocardia, then it is reversed, but that is rare. All right, another view of the lungs. Notice the difference in quantity of lobes, three lobes on the right, two lobes on the left. So on the left, we got a superior and inferior, separated by an oblique fissure. On the right, we got a superior, middle, inferior, separated by an oblique fissure between the lower two and a horizontal fissure between the upper two. Okay, bronchi. Let's talk about them briefly. There are two main bronchi, a right and a left main bronchus. The left main bronchus has got to be longer and more horizontal because it has to travel over and beyond the heart. Now, the main bronchi are going to split and give you lobar bronchi. There are going to be two lobar bronchi, one, two, on the left, and there are going to be three lobar bronchi, all right, three lobar bronchi on the right. Lobar bronchi will then subsequently split to give us segmental bronchi, and then they will split to give us more and more bronchi in the bronchial tree, maybe 12 to 18 splittings. Now, the reason for this is it's going to maximize our surface area. The more branching we do, the more surface area we'll get. I want you to notice also that the bronchi are all cartilaginous. They all have cartilaginous rings or plates, rings in the big ones, plates in the smaller ones. And that cartilage is still for the prevention of collapsing. All right, we'll quit here. Another 10-minute video done. We'll do another one later. Adios.